quick recap, okay? So the thing that you have to keep in mind about the Collections API, right? Collections API was not there before. It's like this is around the year 2000 when I started using Collections API. Thing to keep in mind is it's very, very easy to use. Collections is very, very easy. One minute, please. I'm just going to get a... So basically the collections API is encapsulated within the java.utils.collections. We will be going much more deep into the framework later and this is used everywhere. Okay, so think about it, right? Any application in the world, you think about any application in the world, you cannot do without collections. Your Viz IQ window, you have an attendee list which is growing and shrinking, right? Uh, think about any app any practical application, just, just tell me any practical application. Facebook chat window, okay, if you have a Facebook chat window, you may have a list of all your friends listed, so that is going to be stored in a, in a collection, okay, you may have in Facebook chat window, you may have your contacts, a school library book application, you may have want to have like all the, uh, let's say you may want to pull all the books under a particular alphabet, then when you pull all the books under a particular alphabet, you would store it in a collection, so you have an inbox, let's say inbox, you will have an inbox, you'll have a sent, you will have a received, and you're going to have a count, right? And as a new one comes, the count is going to increase. What are you going to use? Collections API. So you see basically the Collections API is ubiquitous. Okay, when I say ubiquitous, means that it is pretty much used everywhere. I mean, I have not written a single Java program. For all these, uh, I would say not written a single Java program, the Collections is not used in one form or the other. Okay, and uh, so that is the importance of Collections is that it's pretty much used everywhere. Let's say tomorrow you're pulling records from a database. Where are you going to store the results in a collection? Let's say you're parsing an XML. Okay, you parse an XML and where are you going to store the multiple element, array elements from the XML elements on a collection only, okay? So collections is used everywhere, okay, all over the place. And there are different types of collections. There are different levels of optimization of collections, different behavior. So we're going that deep. So let's start with the very first one that we have learned is a vector. And vector what we already learned is just a global array of elements. So some common behavior that you know which is there inside a vector is the ability to add an element. And one more thing which I forgot to add, a collection of elements of a, of a what? Okay, it's a global array of elements of a given type. Some common utilities that you need in anything is a vector, is a add an element, remove an element, get an element, at an index, count the current element. So this is a common, some common behavior that, uh, this is a common behavior that you will see across pretty much every collection. Then there are, see once you know this is a common behavior across all collections, as you go specialized you will be, see into specific behavior like sorting or having unique index or like having a key value pair and all that, so all that comes later. But basically there is this, this is a pretty standard behavior that you're going to see across all um, all uh, collections. It's like you, you are able to add to a collection, you're able to remove from a collection, get an element at an index and count. Oh, so you see this is much easier to work with than arrays. You see that? It's nicer than arrays. What is the one very important difference between a collection and an array? I don't think so you should call it static and dynamic Dipali. It's not the right way to this. The size, the size is fixed. Array length is fixed. Uh, vector length is not fixed. Okay. So it's basically something that you can, it's supposed to push on a pop. You add, you remove, etc. Okay. So typically, ideally, if you're doing the programming in the real world, you would use both arrays and collections and, you know, a lot of them feed into each other. There are utilities to copy a collection from an array. There are utilities to copy from, an array, from a collection to an array. So basically, you can work together with them. Okay. So then I think a couple of other things we learned which are specific to a vector is a vector has a initial capacity and an increment, okay? This is because like I told you, right, internally they use arrays only. 
So as and when you in increment and increase it, right? So they sa they start with the set capacity and then they increase the capacity based on your requirement. Okay. And uh, what does it relearn about array? Um, so this is the initial capacity and this is the increment. Okay, and the other thing we learned was the use of generics in Java. So like sometimes when you have a class like vector, see what is so special about a vector is this particular thing that we say element is an object, right? Sometimes you have certain classes which can work on any Java type. Okay, vector is an example, collections is an example. You may have a class which performs an operation on any Java type. The example is vector, you add an element, do you specify that the element has to be a string or has to be an integer or has to be an object or a student or has to be a person? You don't, right? You can do any Java type, correct? So vector is a class which works on any particular type, but there is a requirement in run time, in compile time to find out which type it is working on. For example, if I have a vector v, I have a vector called v. Now, if I'm using this vector to store strings, can I retrieve a student object from it? Is it possible? You think yes. I'm saying I have a vector. I do vector dot add string, but when I get from the vector, I want to get a student. See, the, I think maybe I'm confusing you with the question. What I'm trying to say is it's not really possible. If you take a box and you put an apple inside it, you're not going, and you pull it, pull it out, you're not going to get an orange unless you're a magician. Okay. So if you take a particular box and you put apples inside it, you, when you pull out something from it, what are you going to get? You're going to get an apple only. Right. So with a vector, even though a vector has a capability of, say, see what I'm trying to say, okay. A vector has a capability of saving any data type, right. I can use strings, this, etc. But once I decide that the vector has strings, then I can only operate thinking that it has strings. Okay, so if I'm adding one string, the second one should also be a string. When I'm retrieving, I should retrieve a string only. Okay, when I'm casting, I should cast it to a string only. Right? So that is a concept of a generic. The concept of a generic is that when you have a class like vector, which can work with any type, you want to be able to inform the compiler at compile time what is the particular type it is dealing with. Understood? So vector as a class has the inherent capability of working with any object, but at the same time, in the comp yes, that is a generic, just be sure, right? See, if vector can work with any object, but I want to inform the compiler what kind of object it is dealing with, so I say vector. This is a vector of string. This is a generic. By doing this, I am informing the compiler that v, this particular variable v, is only going to going to have string. Okay, uh, not like the final keyword Dipali. It's a generic. You cannot. I cannot compare it to anything else. It is basically like almost like saying that is the compiler is going to ensure that v is going to have a only strings. Okay, it can have 20 strings, it can have 30 strings, it can have 50 strings, but it is going to have only strings. Similarly, I may want to do vector. This is a generic which is informing that v1 is only capable of storing objects of type integer. And this is a generic which says that v2 is only capable of storing objects of type student. You understood? So vector is a class which can work with any kind of an object, but I am using a generic to tell the compiler what specific object it is working with. Understood? So this is a generic, the angular bracket, angular bracket. Okay? That's good. Glad you understood. Now, so this is as far as the recap goes. Let's go back to the problems, okay? And you will like working with collections. Collections are very nice to work with, okay? So we started using collections in around the year 2000 and before that we had some pretty limited capabilities in Java, so we were forced to use arrays. Around the year 2000 when we started working collections, it changed the way code is written dramatically. 
very very flexible very powerful and very easy to use i mean when we we first when we found out about collections and we started using we were pretty excited okay. so given a paragraph written a vector consist, consisting of all the words in the para the parallel set of this is a very nice problem anybody solution you could, you have done the same thing using arrays if you remember you have done the same thing using arrays but the difference is in arrays you had to do it twice once you had to get the count and second time you had to populate with a vector you don't need to do that you can just basically iterate it once i hope you all guys remember what i'm talking about okay koshang has got a solution let me take koshang solution one minute Hey, I want to know. Okay, so this is very smooth, right? Remember earlier when we had to do the same thing with an array, you had to iterate it once to find the count, and you had to iterate it a second time just to add it to the array. Do you guys remember? Okay, one couple of changes here. String para one is equal to how are you today? Vector v1 is equal to. Try to use generics. You know, most of the time people use generics. First thing, second is string array one is equal to para one dot split with the space for it i equal to zero i less than a dot length i plus plus v1 dot add a of the array index system dot out dot print length v1. Okay, does this work, Hoshan? I never tried it like this. Does it print the contents of the uh, collection? Oh, good. Okay, smooth. See, so you see how easy it is to work with a collection. Okay, chances are when your attendee list is there that when one more person is uh, comes on to this particular classroom, there is probably an attendee list dot add in the Viz IQ code. Okay, so this is a very simple problem. Let's go to the next one. Any questions regarding this? Solution, please. Nupur has a solution. I like it. Yes, yeah, so everybody should know this. Um, Okay, so one thing you have to keep in mind, okay, that uh, I want to demonstrate like one thing is like how um, interfaces work, okay. You know that vector implements a lot of interfaces, right? It implements a f interface called collection. It implements an interface called um, list, serializable. Sorry, clonable and random access and all that. So this particular interface called list, right? It has a lot of methods to hold a list. Okay, and there are many implementations of list. There is an array list. There is a sorted set. There is a there is an array list. There is a um, linked list. There are multiple types of lists. Okay, so basically the way it works is that in this particular list interface, there is a, a method called contains. Okay, this method called contains. So every class 
which implements this particular interface has to provide an implementation for contains. Contains is what? Is this going to see is this particular element already existing in the vector or not? Okay. So again, you see how interfaces are pretty powerful because if this but if, the, if this particular class implements this interface, it is forced to provide an implementation. So let's look at this vector integer v equals new vector integer string array numbers is equal to number data dot split. Okay, for string number is in numbers perfectly fine. Int n is equal to integer dot pass n number. Okay, if v dot contains n continue else v dot add n. Is this clear to everyone? Even as the only new thing is that it is using the contains method. Almost all all your collections list will have contains. Clear to everyone? And again, I think you should notice how much easier it is.